No matter where you look, one idea remains to be consistent, that data is and is increasingly being more useful. But how you see? This is simply by analysis of this data leading to an actual understanding of this data, leading to data-driven decisions being invaluable. And luckily for you, I've actually got experience with this. And so simply I'm here to explain how I would learn data analysis today if I was to start over in the quickest way possible, also allowing you to avoid all the silly mistakes that I made when I first started. And so I split this video into three sections, mindset, technical skills, tips and tricks. So if there's no distractions, then let's begin. So it probably goes without saying that the mindset needed to do data analysis is an analytical mindset. But what does this really entail? It means applying logic or using a systematic approach to solving everyday problems. Not only ones that are just focused on data, but of course we're looking at data. So how does it actually apply here? Well, it's first understanding a business problem. So asking the right questions. By asking the right questions, you get to a situation where you are trying to now find the data you need to look at trends, patterns and relationships which will allow you at the end of this all to get a situation where you can provide recommendations insights and of course lead to those actual business changing data driven decisions and sometimes that also even just means simply needing more data as a brief example a company of your choice wants you to look at why their sales for product a has fallen so of course you start with asking the right questions those questions being things like, over what period has the sales for product A fallen? Are there related products to product A? So let's say product B, they are also suffering the same thing. And maybe even questions like, has there been any changes to your websites or to the sales funnel that has maybe caused this problem to occur? Of course, now you've asked the right questions and you're trying to gather answers. Those answers will come in the form of, of course, word answers, but also in a form of data that can be given to you. So you can look at over what period has sales been suffering. If there has been any changes to the website, so maybe things like click-through rate have now changed, or maybe if product B is also falling under the same circumstance. Now you've been able to gather this data, you've been able to look at trends, relationships, patterns, you can now finally provide some insight, some recommendations on what needs to be done next. And how do you adopt the same mindset? By just applying it to simple fundamental things in your own life. Let's just say you wanted to buy a new phone contract. Looking at the feasibility of this, sometimes may not having the data, but still proceeding with that systematic thought process to of course get you that end answer of yes, you're gonna get a new phone or no, I can keep my current phone for maybe a year longer. But fortunately, unlike the phone example, you usually have data to work with but how do you adopt or apply the analytical mindset in this scenario? This is using tools, languages, or overall core technical skills essential for a data analyst. And if I was building out a roadmap right now, where I would always recommend starting when learning these tools is with Excel. It's used in almost every single organization. So of course that means most people have a fundamental understanding of how to use it. So even as you develop as an analyst and try to stay clear away from using it, let's be honest, it's core to every single analyst's heart. I know, sometimes I do make myself cringe. Excel has many capabilities, like being able to join data using lookups, able to aggregate data using functions like sum and count, able to clean data and transform it, removing duplicates and blanks, and also even able to visualize data. It can do it all. An additional, not mentioned as much, but very key feature of Excel is Power Query, as it allows you to automate processes that you do. So let's just say cleaning data, as I mentioned earlier. You can do that one time and for the same data set, keep on doing that based on what you've already previously inputted as steps. And where's the best place to learn Excel? I actually like a resource called Learn Excel Online, allowing you to use Excel as if you had it installed on your PC, being able to learn many of the features that it has available on offer. It also provides you with open source data sets, which will be very, very useful for you. 
but more on that later on. The next technical skill you want to learn is the SQL language. You see, while Excel is not specifically amazing at anything, but of course can get the job done, I see SQL as the mature older brother who knows what he's amazing at and doesn't mind bragging about it. And what's his purpose? To retrieve and utilize data found in relational databases, which in comparison to Excel can do this with large data sets and at the same time do this extremely fast. But of course you need to make sure you're writing optimized queries. The SQL language has many different functions allowing it to be used for many different use cases. But as a starter for 10, just learning how to aggregate data, filter data, join data, and provide conditional logic similar to if statements in Excel will get you started. And the resource I really like for learning SQL is W3Schools. They provide you with examples of how to apply different functions, logic, then giving you an opportunity to actually practice what they've just taught you. I also really like Code Academy, but at a certain point, what they provide to you is behind a paywall. So consider that, of course. Now, if you remember what I said about SQL, this is used to retrieve data from relational databases. But now you've got this data, if you want to present it to someone, how do you visualize this data? We've got three main options. Option one is to export this data as a CSV file from the database management system you're using. And then of course, visualize that data in places like Excel. Option two is very similar, but using Python. Libraries like Matplotlib being able to visualize that data for you. But more on that a bit later. And option three, you can use the BI tool. The two BI tools that actually stand out being Power BI and Tableau. But my personal favorite and the one I always go to is Power BI. And why Power BI? It's a good question. And it's because I'm a simple man and Power BI makes things simple as it seamlessly integrates with other Microsoft products, most notably Microsoft PowerPoint, as it allows you to embed pages of your live reports and dashboards into the PowerPoint itself. But also it uses Power Query. And if you remember what I said earlier about Excel, Excel also uses Power Query. So learning one allows you to learn the other. And of course, this makes the process simple. With the use of Power Query itself, Power BI has the ability to transform data useful for the data cleaning process, analyze data using the DAX programming language and built within Power BI. And of course, what we all know it for, being able to visualize data once you're trying to do that presentation. And it has a host of visualizations that you can pick from, but also some additional ones that you can download and utilize if you see the need. And where are the best places to learn Power BI? Well, I'll actually start with Microsoft's Learn Pathway as it goes through the fundamentals of using Power BI and actually gives you a sandbox environment to start doing some work on it. Once you've done the fundamentals and learned some of the things there, I would actually come, guess where? Back here onto YouTube. And there's two channels in particular that I really like and really got me going when I first started dabbling with Power BI. And that's SQL BI or SQL BI as I like to call it. And Gynacube which leaves us with one last technical skill I'd recommend learning, and that is Python. And yes, there is an alternative in learning R, but I don't personally recommend that, only because of the fact that Python in itself is more in demand, so it gives you more prospects for jobs. Of course, it being more in demand actually means that more people know it, so it's easier for you to collaborate with your colleagues and also can do a lot more than just data analysis itself, even though you are learning it specifically for that. So if you wanted to broaden your horizons in the future, gives you the opportunity to do that as well. Now, the big question, do you need Python for an entry level role? Normally, if I'm being completely honest with you, no. But right now isn't normal. The job market is extremely hard. And so doing anything to stand out just a bit will be helpful. So learning Python, just the basics of the language, so looking at loops, if statements, but also being able to use the relevant libraries. So pandas and numpy to do your data cleaning and analysis, and then top that off with matplotlib to just visualize that data will get you a long way ahead. And as some additional items that Python can actually help you with, is automating or streamlining some of your data analysis tasks. And where can you learn Python for data analysis? Actually right here on YouTube. Unfortunately for you, Luke Bruce, another content creator, who I'd say is very, very data savvy, actually has created a whole course dedicated to this. So definitely go give that a look. 
and let her know that I sent you when you get there. Now for tips and tricks. Tip number one, practice, practice, practice. For most of you, including myself, just watching a video alone is not gonna give you or ingrain the skills that you require to actually be successful on your endeavor. So that means practicing on all the exercises that are there, doing those tutorials, actually doing additional coding exercises. So mainly actually looking at SQL for potential interviews to come. Places that I actually recommend and look at would be Leak Code and HackerRank. And doing that, putting in that work will do you wonders going forward and actually give you that confidence when you get into the interview. But alongside this, I'd actually say practice on creating your own projects as well which actually links to the next tip. Create your own data portfolio. The point of the data portfolio is to simply showcase to employers that you've done some work with data as at this current point, you don't actually have real world work experience. I would even go one step further if you really wanna stand out and create projects based on the industries that you're applying for. So it showcases to some degree domain knowledge if you're able to, I guess, talk on the projects themselves within your interviews. Tip number three, do your own work, but use ChatGPT. You see, while ChatGPT can't do everything and definitely shouldn't be relied on, it can help you in times where your code or formulas error out. So instead of having to previously go on to Power BI forums, look at Stack Overflow, even sometimes find yourself on Reddit to find answers to your questions, you can just ask ChatGPT, what's the problem? Why is the problem happening? And actually get to explain it to you in a very simple way. So you start the process, do that work, and then where possible, if needed, use ChatGPT. Tip number four, Learn as much as you can for free before paying for a course. With social media like YouTube and TikTok, and even looking at LinkedIn, there's so much free game out there. So many resources that provide everything you need to definitely get the fundamentals covered off. So before spending money, ensure you have a roadmap of what you wanna learn and how you wanna learn it. Exhaust all those resources for free. And then if you need to get to the next level, and this course is actually gonna take you there, then pay for that course. Tip number five, your now what is always gonna be greater than your analysis. Just summarize it quickly. You can do all the technical work in the world, but if your now what is not providing business value, then all that work will be overlooked. And the last tip, number six, why are you still here? What are you waiting for? You see, I definitely appreciate the fact that you're still here clearly shown some interest, but that also means you've got a lot of work to do. Fortunately for you, all the things that I've mentioned here today will be links found in the description below. So with this, you can make a start. But if you don't want to start now, there's actually a video that YouTube recommends for you to watch right here on the screen. Anyways, with whatever you do, good luck in your journey. Take care. Stay blessed and peace.